On behalf of the Council of Governors, allow me with great pleasure to welcome and thank the Chief Guest, Honorable Moses Wetangula, for honoring our invitation to grace this ceremony. As a Council, we recognize and appreciate the new administration's commitment to advance democratic governance as well as support the implementation of devolution. I now take this opportunity to extend my gratitude to my fellow Excellency Governors for electing me today to serve as a chairperson of the Council for the next year. I am profoundly humbled, honored, and privileged to be entrusted, entrusted with this role at a critical time when we have just ushered in the third generation of county governments. The responsibility bestowed upon me is no mean fit, but I am equal to the task. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, devolution has come of age. In the last nine years, we have witnessed remarkable milestones in the devolved sectors. I salute the pioneer county governors who have, to a great measure, played a fundamental role in delivering essential services, developing local economies, and empowering communities through robust public participation. Indeed, devolution has had tremendous impact on every Kenyan. As we take up the mantle, we must strive to build on the successes and achievements made so that we can deliver on the devolution dream where every citizen, regardless of status, has equal access to services. I note that we are blessed with the vast team comprising of 26 new governors, 11 second-term governors, and eight pioneer governors, and 40 new deputy governors who have rich experience that will greatly benefit devolution. Your Excellencies, as a Council of Governors, we commit to a collaborative approach in governance and affirm our support to ensure that the manifesto of the government is, and the manifesto of all counties and the government is achieved. In our view, if fully implemented, Kenya will achieve durable growth while maintaining macroeconomic stability and empowerment of the people at the bottom of the pyramid. On the same note, Your Excellencies, we call upon your support to the Council of Governors as we prioritize to address the following challenges which persisted in the previous administration. The first one is the perennial delay of disbursement of funds by the National Treasury, which has hampered smooth and efficient uninterrupted service delivery. We hope, Buona Speaker, you will relay the message of that which the Council of Governors is expecting to be addressed by the national government. Number two, revoking of executive orders which seek to establish authorities to undertake devolved functions in competition with county governments. Number three, anchoring of the COG secretariat in law to facilitate adequate support to county governments. Number four, a review of laws, policies, and regulations, especially in the agriculture, water, and health sectors which claw back on devolution. Number five, finalization of the unbundling, transfer, and costing of devolved functions. Number six, increased funding to devolved units to at least 35% of the national revenue. And number seven, the fast tracking of the governor's pension. It is our hope that the affirmation challenges will be addressed within the next three months to enable counties realize their full potential. And now more than ever, both levels of government must join hands as we execute our distinct but complementary roles. We hope that consultation and dialogue will be our mantra as we forge ahead so that together we can steer devolution to greater heights. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, with those few remarks, I would like to request us to be upstanding as I take this humble opportunity to welcome His Excellency, the Right Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly,